ring. Hello, and welcome to this close-up kin stretch class. This falls into our kin stretch at your desk category because you can do it sitting at your desk, darling. Can and probably should. Yes, highly recommend. So this comes by request uh, from many of our members right now who are dealing with some neck crankiness, given all the extra time we're spending on screens uh, in our current existence. Yep. Um, so we invite you to uh, sample this whole class. It's gonna be a short one and then pick out any snippets of it that really help you to feel better. Um, the goal for most of these movements is that you'll have some immediate relief mm -hmm. to neck tension or neck discomfort. Um, we'll do some sort of testing and retesting as we go. Um, but please repeat any of these little sections that provide neck relief for you as many times throughout your day as you would like. You can't really overdo them because they're all very gentle. Um, Will's gonna be our model, and um, we're gonna begin just seated. You can do this whole thing in a chair. You wanna feel that your spine is relatively upright. I almost said variably upright. Relatively upright with relative ease. And then um, we're gonna start with a breakdown of our neck car. So we'll begin with flexion which starts by just bringing your chin towards your throat, getting as much anti-selfie face as you can, and then nodding your nose towards your chest. And keep bending your face towards your chest, if you will, for as far as it feels good to go, coming into full neck flexion. You can take your time and just check in that you're still breathing. When you've nodded forward as far as it feels good, go ahead and smoothly come back up. Once you come up to sort of normal face height, if you'd like, you can start to add in a little bit of extension, which would be to lift your chin. What I ask is that you don't just toss your head back. The head weighs um, eight to 15 pounds, depending on the individual. So we don't wanna just chuck that back there. But if it does feel good to lift your chin and get a good stretch on the front of your neck, go for it. Keep working with that. Tuck the chin to the throat, segmenting through flexion and extension at a nice, smooth, enjoyable pace and as always making the movement a little smaller if you run into any pinch points especially in the closing angle side it's okay to gather some sensation in that opening angle side and find your own pace with this everyone's going to have a different amount of range of motion so everyone's flexion and extension will require a different amount of time to complete that's why we're working for a timed set rather than counting our reps and just check in as you're doing this that your shoulders are still whew, down on your ribs. They might want to try to sneak up and join forces with your ears. And that would be a little counterproductive to what we're trying to do today. Good. Next time your face gets back to normal eye level, go ahead and let that go. And then we'll start exploring our next movement of the neck, which is lateral flexion. So again here, this is where the shoulders would potentially like to really get involved. So go ahead and place your hands either on your collarbones and give a gentle kind of anti-shrug and pull down to activate your armpits. Or if that doesn't feel good for whatever reason, you can take your arms slightly wider than your body and reach down with nice strong fists to again activate some of that armpit tissue. Pick your poison. And then from here, we're gonna go ear to shoulder. I'm trying to get a little opening stretch on the long side, sensation of contraction on the shortening side and then you can bring that back up to center and then go ahead and head the other way. Breathing in there somewhere. It's amazing to me still as a kin stretch instructor, when I work on my neck, I stop breathing. It's been a stressful and a painful place for many years of my life. And so uh, there's still that kind of reaction to sort of stiffen. So really encourage you to breathe in through your nose, out through your mouth in a super relaxed fashion if you can. And just keep exploring that side to side motion at a nice slow groovy pace. Hmm. Last 10 seconds. And then next time you come up to center, you can let that go. Yeah, and just already, give yourself a little wiggle if you need to. Already feeling good. Yay, so. excellent. Okay, and then our last one and our sort of fanciest one is rotation. Um, so again, you can do that same hand positioning, something to keep your shoulders actively in that anti-shrug. 
And then you're gonna think of kind of leading with your nose, letting your eyes follow. Look to the right. Maybe looking behind you if it feels good, but again, really respect those sensations that you're feeling. When you can't look any further to the right, bring it smoothly to center. And then start looking on over to the left. As you explore rotation here, just imagine that you're gonna stay tall through the very crown of your head. Almost like you have a string pulling up through the very tippy top of your noggin, right in between your ears. Um, gently just giving you a little lift. So you're not collapsing or sacrificing any length or any space between your vertebra. <sighs> Beautiful. Last 10 seconds here. Check in that you're breathing. Check in that the shoulders aren't trying to climb on up to the ears. It's all good. And when you get back to center, go ahead and relax. Very nice. Okay. <clears throat> so we're going to do um, our full neck card, just one rep in each direction. And the idea is that we're going to put together all of those movements. Very often, if you're newer to these, it feels like some of them get lost a little bit. Some of them are very clear, but some of them sort of get lost in the circle. Just do your best to have the idea that each of those movements we just explored are connecting the dots in this circle. So once again, check in that your spine is upright and easy, that your shoulders are pulled down, either arms by side or crossed. Take a deep breath, and then begin by tucking your chin into your throat, nodding your nose to your chest, finding as much cervical flexion or neck flexion as you can get, and then start to rotate to the right, tracing your collarbone with your chin and your nose, trying to look past that right shoulder, and then let that naturally turn into a little bit of lateral flexion on the right side, ear to shoulder. As much as feels good, really go with what feels good. And then take that chin and start tracing a rainbow across the ceiling, slowly but surely lengthening the front of the neck tissues, pulling on those collarbones until you're looking all the way past the left shoulder. And then trace that left collarbone all the way back to center. When you get there, pause, take a breath in case you weren't breathing, and then go ahead and reverse that. So you're gonna trace your collarbone to the left, maybe looking past the left shoulder, maybe not. Rotation's gonna be real different on either side. Ear to shoulder, trace that beautiful rainbow across the ceiling with your chin. And it's up to you if it feels better to have the eyes closed or open when you do this. It's just a variable to play with. When you get back to center, Float on up. So just bookmark any major sensations of stretch or tension that you ran across in that little full circle diagnostic. We're going to have a chance later to uh, explore more deeply some of those lines of tension. Um, but the first one we're going to explore is actually the sort of upper cervical vertebra. Um, and that might produce a stretch in the very upper part of your neck, right where your skull meets your neck. So actually right now, just go ahead and take your hands if you can, if it feels comfortable, and try to find what feels like, okay, that's definitely my head, that's my skull, and then just gently move down until you start to feel some more squishy muscle tissue that feels like it's below those skull bones. And just give it a, just an enjoyable rub, right? We're not professional manual therapists by any means, but we can give ourselves a little positive touch, just bringing some extra sensation to that area, right along the hairline, generally, although that's variable for mm -hmm. most of us. <laughs> Good, and then let that go. And then from here, you can just rest your hands on your lap or wherever is comfortable. And we're gonna try to bow a little stretch right in that area. So we're gonna think about that cue of drawing the chin into the throat. I call this the anti-selfie face. Yes, try to make as many chins as you can and see if that opens up a little stretch in that back of head area. And then you're gonna, for this whole drill, try to keep your chin as close to your, the front of your throat as you can. And you're just gonna rotate, look, trace your chin to the right, any amount that feels good, and then trace your chin to the left. You're gonna make funny faces. Good, keep going back and forth, we're on the clock here. Each time you come through center, ask yourself, can I draw the tip of my chin any closer into the front of my throat? 
perhaps waking up and activating some muscles that are contracting in that deep front of throat area up under the jaw and increasing a nice stretch sensation around the hairline-ish. Good. And let that go. Wow. That can really uncover some interesting sensations. We tend to be a little bit like this a lot of the time, so we're keeping that area quite short. So to really lengthen it out feels new and exciting. For sure. Okay, so we're gonna do one more set of that. You can do the same, same, or you can add on a little bit of lateral flexion. So let me have Will show one rep, just so you can see it first, and then we'll do it together, because it's hard to look and move your neck at the same time. Um, so we'll go ahead and tuck your chin into your throat, beautiful as before. Give me rotation towards me, probably will help you up. And then if you want, this is what you can add on, a little bit of lateral flexion. So he's giving me a little bit of ear to shoulder on the side that he twisted towards, which opens up even more stretch sensation. And then he can come back out of that lateral flexion, come through center, rotate to the new side and relax for a second. Yeah. And Will, will you just gesture where you're feeling the stretch? Yeah. And it really does feel like I'm sort of just micro adjusting to target that specific area that Hannah had us kind of like uh, putting our hands on. So yeah, everyone's going to need to micro adjust to their own tension spot. Yeah. Use the sensation of stretch that you feel to guide what your other side does. Sort of think, can I pinch? down on this side in any way to open up something on the opposite side. That's your question to play with. All right, here we go. Nice and tall, deep breath in. Start by tucking the chin into the throat. Rotate in whichever direction you'd like. And then if you'd like, add a little ear to shoulder on the side you rotated towards. So you can get a little more stretch sensation. And then come back through center and find something on the other side. You might need different micro adjustments on either side to bow a stretch. We are not often symmetrical. I almost said we are not often asymmetrical. We are most often not symmetrical. Last 10 seconds, keep exploring. Really asking that question, what can I close to open something on the opposite side? for three, two, and one, and let that go. Yeah, Feels okay, good. nice. So now we're gonna zoom out a little bit. We're gonna look for more of a global stretch, anywhere between the ear and the top of the shoulder, this whole swath of tissue. So again, sitting up nice and tall, you can have your hands on collarbones, or you can have your arms down by your sides, or you can rest your hands on your lap, totally fine. Go ahead and take your right ear to your right shoulder. And the goal is to find a stretch somewhere on the left side. Yeah? Now we want to make sure that we're not allowing any pinching sensation on the right side. So if you were getting some sensation on that right side, we'd want you to back off a little bit, even if that meant you felt a slightly less intense stretch on the other side. We're going to just breathe into this passive stretch for about 15 seconds. So I invite you to do that nice relaxation breathing. Slow inhale through the nose slower exhale through the mouth. And of course, if nose breathing is obstructed for any reason, you're welcome to breathe through the mouth. If it helps to have a count, you could try for a three count inhale and a seven count exhale to really just communicate to your nervous system that everything is just a-okay. And then we're gonna stay in this position, maintain the stretch. Find your left shoulder in your mind's eye and draw your left shoulder blade down towards your waist, which should increase that sensation of stretch in the left side. Hold that shoulder blade down for a full breath in, full breath out. Good, another full breath in. Can you pull it down anymore? Full breath out. And then on your next breath, just slowly let the shoulder blade relax, but keep the neck in the bend. If your neck is willing to bend a little further, if you opened up some slack, go for it. Don't crank on anything that's not willing to move. We're gonna do that again. Draw the shoulder blade down, left shoulder blade. Stay for two full breath cycles, in and out. <sighs> Breathing in such a way that you allow your belly to move when you breathe. On your third breath, 
keep the neck where it is, but let the shoulder blade just go, let that effort go. We're gonna do one more time here. Draw the shoulder blade down. Breathing into the stretch sensation that you feel. Can you inhale as though you were gonna expand that stretching tissue? Can you exhale to let some of the tension evaporate? Two full breath cycles. On your third breath, let the shoulder blade effort go. And then if you'd like, you can use your opposite hand, your right hand, to support your head back up to center. If it feels fine, you can also just bring yourself up on your own accord, but it's good to remember that the head weighs a good amount relative to the size of the muscles that are supporting your head. So always have that option of a little assisted exit if you need it. All right, so take a moment to just wiggle. This is some focused work, so thank you for your focus. And then we're gonna go the opposite way. Take your left ear to your left shoulder. Any amount, looking for a nice stretch on that right side, kind of general wash of ear to shoulder. You might get it more in the front, more right on top, more in the back, all gravy. Checking in with that slow breathing, relaxed breathing, both shoulders just easily on the rib cage, right? At this point, we're not trying to jam them down, but we also don't want them to elevate. Good, and then keep the neck in that bend that produces the stretch. Take your right shoulder blade and drag it down towards your waist. Hold for two full breath cycles. <sighs> Could you let your exhale be a sigh of relief? On your third breath, keep the neck where it is, but let the shoulder blade effort relax. If you feel some slack open up, go ahead and bend a little further, but only if it feels good. Find a pleasant stretch. Round two, pull that right shoulder blade down. Hold for two full breaths. Full breath in, allowing your belly to move, full breath out. Breathing into the stretch that you feel. On your third breath, go ahead and let that shoulder blade effort relax. And we got one more. Draw the right shoulder blade down, maybe a little further this time. Maybe it's getting better at this task. Stay for two full breaths. Can you breathe into this tension or stretch that you feel? Can you breathe out to just evaporate some of that tension? Totally metaphorical ask here, not literally a scientific thing that can happen, but Sometimes a little magic goes a long way. And then slowly release that shoulder blade effort, and then if it feels good, bring your head up or give yourself that little assist from the same side hand, yeah. And just like, let's normalize, one side's gonna feel really different than the other. I know mine do. Okay, great, so we're gonna go back to our full neck car. This is a chance to check in and see if anything has adjusted uh, since we've done a little bit of upgrades and then we'll get two more moves for you. So again, take a moment, wiggle in your seat if you need to, make sure you feel supported under your butt, both cheeks, spine is upright, arms can give you a little extra feedback of what the collarbones are or aren't doing, or can reach by your sides. Begin by tucking your chin in towards your throat, nod your nose to your chest, get as much neck flexion as that neck's gonna give you, and then rotate to the right. Trying to look past the right shoulder with your chin, Tip your ear back over that right shoulder, adding in that lateral flexion, and then take your chin up and across the ceiling, big rainbow, all the way over to the left shoulder. Good, trace your collarbone back to center. When you hit center, pause and rewind. And go back the way you came. Take your time. Yes, Will's doing a lovely slow pace. I want you to find your one mile per hour pace. Again, range of motion will be really different person to person, which means the time it takes to make a full revolution will be different person to person. So give your body the time that it needs. When you hit center, let's go one more time in each direction, completely at your own pace, putting all these beautiful pieces together saving and uploading the new information that you've given to your cells, letting your nervous system get up to speed with what we've done here. Keep breathing. Mm. Nice. 
Nice team. Keep moving and breathing. The next time your chin gets back to center, go ahead and let that go. All right, so next up we're gonna build on our little um, side stretch or lateral flexion stretch and scapular movement. So before we had you just pull your shoulder blade down, you're welcome to stick with that if this next thing we offer feels like scratching your head and rubbing your tummy and you're just not getting any traction with it. Um, oh yeah, we should do our scap cars, huh? Mm -hmm. That'd be good. All right, we'll do some scap cars and then we'll do this next move. Sweet. So, <clears throat> arms down by your sides. If you're in a seat here, you just wanna have your hands wide enough that you're not actually in contact with the chair or the couch, whatever you're sitting on. And then you're gonna pull your shoulder blades up towards your ears, there's that shrug, and then anti-shrug. We'll just explore that for 30 seconds here, up and down. And just feel how moving your shoulder blades does in fact connect to your neck. Mm -hmm. Connect and neck. Beautiful. I often try to write neck with a K in front of it when I'm writing by hand. <laughs> I can corroborate that. Yeah, that's true. Good. Now, bring your arms out in front of you if it feels good. If it doesn't, you can keep your arms down by your sides. And now I'd like you to pull your shoulder blades into the spine and then apart from the spine. Beautiful. Squeeze in and then stretch wide. Can you stretch wider? Keep going. Might feel some crunchy bits, some pops and cracks. Might feel like one moves better than the other. It's pretty normal. Good, and then relax those arms for a second. We're gonna put all those movements together in something that will eventually feel like a circle, I promise. Uh, you can choose if you'd like to be arms here or arms down by your side. Either one is great, it's just a matter of what helps you focus on the shoulder blade movement. So pick your poison, spine is nice and upright. Brace some air into the abdominals so that your spine isn't going to contribute movement. And then draw the shoulder blades up towards the ears, in towards the spine, down towards the back pockets, and then wide across your back. Keep going in that same direction. Up like a shrug, in, squeeze to the spine for retraction, down towards the waist for depression, and then spread wide towards the armpits for protraction. Keep going at your own smooth one mile per hour pace in that direction. Just picking up what you can notice, what muscles are contracting, what's stretching, what feels invisible. Pause and reverse that circle. Wherever you are, just rewind it. Check in that you're still breathing and check in that your ribs still feel connected to your hips, that you're not allowing your spine to arch and round and change shape. I want to keep relatively neutral-ish. Good. Last five, four, three, two, and one. Fantastico. Okay, so we're going to take that little scapular movement. We're going to put it together with our side neck stretch, but you're going to do one shoulder blade at a time. So fancy. All right, so let's go right ear to right shoulder. You can have your left arm nice and strong, reaching down by your side, slightly away from your body, that'll help. And then the game is we wanna camp out in this position where you feel the stretch. So fix your eyes, your eye gaze, on something that is not moving in the room where you are, and then start to move that shoulder blade up, squeeze it in towards the spine, squeeze it down towards the waist, Push it forward into protraction. Keep going in that same direction. It might feel clunky AF, even compared to the last scapular circle that you did, because we're now asking that shoulder blade to move while some of the muscle tissues that are attached to it are being stretched and on tension. So go slow. We don't want any unpleasant surprises. We just want to explore and find out what's there to be gathered. Keep leaning your ear towards your shoulder, right ear to right shoulder into that stretch. Pause wherever you are in reverse direction. Are you still breathing? Good, are you being given some slack by your neck tissues? Could you bring your right ear a little closer to your shoulder or are they holding strong? 
respect either input that you're receiving. The last five, four, three, two, one. Let the shoulder blade action go and then allow your neck to float up. <sighs> okay, we're gonna do that on the other side. So once again, sitting up tall, take your right arm down by your side, left ear to left shoulder. Find a stretch somewhere in that general flow from ear to shoulder. And then start your scapular car on the right. So right shoulder blade comes up like a shrug, squeezes into the spine, glides down towards the waist any amount, pushes forward into protraction. Keep going in that same direction. You're on the clock. Find your one mile per hour pace. Going slow enough that you're not going to unpleasantly surprise yourself. This is new territory for most of us. We wanna really just be kind to ourselves as we move through this range. Pause wherever you are and reverse direction. Hmm. Letting the breath flow in and out. Beautiful. If the circle with your shoulder blade is feeling good, can you increase the size of the circle just a little bit each rep? If it's feeling sketchy at all, let it be small. You're still going to give yourself really valuable information. Three, two, one. Let the shoulder blade action go and then head comes back upright in a way that feels good. Yes. Fabulous. Okay, for our last trick, we save the best for last in some ways. Um, we're going to ask you to try to segment your neck, I almost said your spine, it's part of your spine, um, into lateral flexion. So th theoretically, we have five independent vertebra between the ears and the collarbones. Often when we bend to the side, we feel like we have like one or maybe two. So we're just going to try to chunk that into some general sort of geography that will give you some sense of, okay, it's not just one place that bends, there's actually multiple joints that are contributing to that lateral flexion motion. So I'm gonna have, uh, let's see, I'm gonna have Will go left ear to left shoulder first, and um, I'm gonna give him a little tactile cue, my fancy pencil for this part. Um, you, I would invite you at home to actually just use your fingertips to just lightly touch, you can either kind of like do a little do 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 Morse code to help wake up sensation. You can do a little circle. You can just do a static touch. See what feels most productive for you. So um, watch for a second. The couple places we're gonna try to touch are like right around the ear, right around the, um, if you had an Adam's apple, sort of where that would go, or where your like 90s choker would be worn. <laughs> and then right above the collarbone space or right around the shirt collar area, yeah? Granted, that's only three, I said there were five, but we're just trying to get a little bit more feeling of the different sections of the neck, okay? So sitting up nice and tall, take a deep breath, and only at the ear can you get a little bit of bend, and at home, again, put your fingertip there, see if you can feel something move or change beneath your fingertips. Hold on to that, and then move down, trying to get a little bit of bend now, moving down towards that sort of choker line good hold on to that and then see if you can get a little bit more moving down towards the t-shirt collar maybe even into the collarbone area nice well that's great and then build it back up from the bottom can you bring up segment by segment kind of reversing that order oh yes subtle very subtle okay so let's do the same thing going the opposite way we'll go side to side so now fingertips would be on the other side. Yeah, you can demo that wheel if you want. And then turn, bending just at the ears, in between the ears. Hold on to that. Bend just where you feel like that choker would go, right in the middle of the neck. And then any amount of bend at the t-shirt collar region, build it back up from the bottom. Collar, choker, ears. Good, nice. We'll go two more in each direction and then we'll call it a day. Bending at the ears, the first way you went. Good, just checking in. Bending at the middle of the neck, that choker position. 
adding on, building on what you got from the ear, and then building on that, start giving a little bit of bend right at the t-shirt collar, yes, and then building it back up from the bottom. Beautiful, good. Take a deep breath just in case you weren't breathing, go the other way. Bending at the ear, keeping that, traveling down, getting a little bend at the choker line. Good. And then a little bend at the t-shirt collar line. Mm -hmm. Noticing which sections are less uh, willing and then build yourself back up from the bottom. Fantastic team, one more each side, completely at your own pace. You know the landmarks now. Go for it. Allowing your breath to move freely. Maybe visualizing the segments of your neck. Whatever image comes to mind is totally fine. It does not need to be anatomically correct. One more time to the second direction. Well, great job folks at home. Thank you for spending a little time to love up on your neck. Um, hope this was useful for you. We'd love to hear questions. Um, you can comment in the app or uh, comment in the group. And um, also would love to hear what you discovered. Any mm. kind of insights or new sensations that um, tickled your awareness from these exercises. Have a good one.